G'day toy fiends, how you going? So, greetings from Melbourne, Australia, where we're out of lockdown, we're in lockdown, we're out of lockdown, nobody really knows, because there is no plan. But, that does let me actually get back into the studio and make some toys, now that I have a bit of time on my hand. So, tonight, you've gone through and you've seen a whole bunch of my previous videos, thank you very much for subscribing and watching, um, please subscribe. Uh, and some of them have been quite long, so tonight I actually wanted to do something that was a little shorter for you and just give you an idea as to what I actually use to paint my toys. I've had a few queries and that about painting and hey, when are you going to do a painting tutorial on that? I will do a painting tutorial uh, when I have some stuff prepped. That will be coming up. But for now, what I really wanted to show you is look, everybody uses different paints. There's so much stuff on the market, so much that's really cool, and so many combinations that you can actually use. What I want to do is I just want to show you what I use to paint my toys. I have a few different things, a few different techniques that I do it. Um, so I want to show you how I prepare my paints, what I generally use, my base coats, my, my airbrushing, my top coats, and all that kind of stuff, and just kind of take you through a little bit of the materials that I use for painting. Enjoy this somewhat shorter video and um, enjoy. Okay, so you've got a toy, you've cleaned it up. This one has not been cleaned up. Um, you clean it up and you wanna paint it. So what do you wanna do? First thing that you're gonna to have to do is wash this. You have to wash it. Um, I usually wash it in soapy water uh, and then I'll give it just another bit of a wash after that. Sometimes I'll like take a bit of alcohol and just rub it off. But you want to make sure that you don't have any mold release on here. You don't have any crap or any dirt or any, you know, bits and pieces and stuff like that. You just don't, you want it to be nice and clean. And then you have to prime it. This is resin. If you just paint onto this with paint, inevitably it will peel off or chip off or something like that because resin just doesn't it just doesn't stick paint very well so what do I use as a primer there's a whole bunch of different primers that you can use but I use this uh, this is Rust-Oleum 2x ultra cover um, I found this one I think my friend chipped to put me onto this one actually uh, and you just get it from a hardware store or anything like that in your area but this is the premium thing here, plastic, right? So it'll actually bond to plastic. If you paint it on here, and you just need a few light coats, don't go overboard when you're, when you're doing this. And yes, I'll do a painting tutorial after this. <clears throat> you, don't wanna, you don't wanna go too heavy. If you go too heavy, it'll drip, it'll like, yeah, it'll just fuck the surface. You just want like two good coats on it, like from a fair distance away, and do that. The good thing about this Rust-Oleum stuff is that it comes in multiple colors, right? So you can do your base coat as a whole bunch of different colors. Now, if I'm airbrushing, I will just use the white because I want the ability to, you know, <clears throat> airbrush whatever color I want to onto that surface, okay? That said, if I'm using one of my special paints, then I will use a black, and I'll get to that in a minute. So next up, what do I use for my airbrushing paint? Well, you've got a whole bunch of different options. You've got things like Vallejo, but I use this. And this is probably my favorite paint. Um, and I'll just take it out of here. It's a Japanese paint, and this is Mr. Hobby Aqueous. Alright. Mr. Ho Aqueous Hobby Color. Now, there's two types of Mr. Hobby. Um, one is Mr. Hobby Color, which is... like this and the other one is a Mr. Hobby Aqueous. Now this one is more like your traditional model enamel paint. It's not enamel but it's more like an enamel paint. It reacts and acts like an enamel paint. The Aqueous on the other hand is a water soluble paint 
which can come in handy for cleaning brushes and doing all that kind of stuff. If it dries though, it dries. It dries like an enamel. You gotta be careful when you're hand painting with this stuff because it'll take a couple of coats for you to paint it on. Um, but airbrushing it, airbrushing it's beautiful. It's so many different colors and you can mix and match and all that kind of stuff. Um, if I'm using this stuff with an airbrush, I will always use some of this. This is a Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Now, what this lets me do is it makes, I, I water it down maybe half-half or so. You can get this one in a specific one that is for the aqueous color as well, the watercolor one. But I, I find you don't really need it. You can use this just as well. And the key here is leveling thinner, right? You get a Mr. Color Thinner and a Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. You want a leveling thinner. What that means is that your your paint, when you airbrush it on, it'll always settle into a nice level surface, okay? So these are my favorite paints. And yes, I use these for both airbrushing. Well, not this one, sorry, because I don't really use Mr. Color. Um, you can use this for, oh, you know, airbrushing and hand painting. So you can see an example here. This is airbrushed, the orange here, and the blue, the blue is hand painted on, okay? Because I want to start hand painting these details and stuff like that. Um, now you'll notice also that this is a little shiny, right? So the cool thing that I do just to get that nice shiny effect when I'm airbrushing is I use some of this pearl pigment, okay? So you can add this pearl pigment into your airbrush and it'll end up into your airbrush paint and it'll give you this nice shiny thing. You can't use too much of it or it'll clog up your airbrush, all right? So they're pearl pigments. They come in, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. They come in all different colors. Um, you can just add them to your airbrush. And I'll cover airbrushing when I go through and I do my painting tutorial, which will be coming up at some stage, okay? So after that, I mean, look, you can use, you can use acrylic paint if you really want to. Um, golden colors are my favorite. They're just beautiful paints. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with using an acrylic paint, but you need to be careful with acrylic paint. Make sure it's good quality, and you need to make sure that it won't react with your top coat. And again, we'll get to top coats in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can use acrylic paint. <clears throat> I wouldn't airbrush with this. Um, I find that it's okay, but there's just something about it. It doesn't always grip as well on the, uh, on the undercoat and the base coat and stuff. So then we have these. Now these are called Monster Color. So I experimented with Monster Color quite some time ago. I love Monster Color for the pure reason that you don't need to use a base coat with Monster Color. You don't need to actually prime it. This stuff will actually bond to your resin. And that is awesome. It's, it's really cool. It just lets you, you know, pull it out of this and uh, whack it in your airbrush. And that's it. You just, no priming, no nothing necessary. That said, I spent a lot of money on Monster Color and it has one huge, huge drawback, which for me kind of stopped me using it so much. And that's the fact that, you know, they come with these, uh, you know, the caps and they come with these internal caps here, right? Like that. The problem is, even with these internal caps, this shit dries up. It just like, it's capped, it's been capped, and it's just, it's just dried up. And these are not cheap paints. So I guess I need to find a better way of keeping them and maintaining them or something. Like you can get all kinds of awesome paints in Monster Color and they're really great. But if you're not gonna use them straight away, you can't like leave them lying around because even if you cap these for some reason they just they just freaking dry out man like i've wasted so much money worth in monster color because i bought a whole heap and i couldn't use them all straight away and yeah i made the mistake of not putting the internal cap on on some of them and they just went poof poof like just you know dried out totally so i don't know um, I still have like a whole bunch of unopened ones which haven't dried out But invariably even if I you know, I put this cap in Yeah, I don't know. 
Like, maybe I'm just doing it wrong or something like that. But these are really great for um, things like painting Sofubi as well, because they just grip onto that. I don't know what's in here, um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. I, I love Monster Color. It's just... Man, I wish they didn't dry out on me so much. I don't know why. Like, you know? So then I have another paint that I use, um, and that is uh, this one by by Green Stuff World. Okay, this is Color Shift paint. Color Shift paint is so cool because it it has this iridescent quality to it. It kind of like you know, like you can see on these on these toys. This is a purple and a green, and no matter which some way where you're you know kind of moving around the light, you can see purples and greens. Right, same as this one. This is a purple and blue. I don't know if you see the effect on my really shitty cameras that one day I really need to upgrade because it would be much better to do it. But they have this iridescent quality. Now, it's great. It's really awesome. So many different colors that you can use, and like you know, um, they've got the color shift chart on here. There's three different packs from what I know. Three or four different packs, maybe. Um, but that's where I come back to, to, to this stuff, because in order to use this effectively, you need a black base coat, right? So I'll black base coat it with a Rust-Oleum, black base coat, and then I'll airbrush this stuff on, right? Now, the problem with that is that it, it does end up with your figure being a bit darker, right? And, man, you need to do... You need to do a lot of coats to get this effect. Like these have got like four coats on them, four or five coats. Um, and the thicker it is, the better, but you just need to be really careful when you're airbrushing them on. Um, and they are a bit darker, right? You can go through and do the hand painting and, and highlights and stuff like that, you know, and, and that'll make it a bit better. Really, really cool paint. Um, if you can find it, it's a uh, color shift metal uh, from Green Stuff World. This is the metal pack, all right? Um, also, traditionally, like, you can just use spray paint. This is an artist spray paint. This is one of my favorites. This is Sigma 80s. Um, you can use spray paint. No problem. Works perfectly fine. Um, good for effects and all that kind of stuff. Again, you need to test it with your, your top coat and make sure that it doesn't react because some of these paints, they will react with that. Okay? Um... Ink, I use Molito <laughs> because it's just, you know, really good. You can use ink um, on your base coats. Again, caveat, be careful of your top coat because your top coat can react with inks really badly, really badly. I've ruined paintings and everything like that. But yeah, you can use ink, like, you know, maybe just for details and stuff like that. Just, you know, have a go and experiment. And, and that's the thing with this stuff, right? experiment with your paints you're going to mess it up you're going to get things wrong like there's different certain paints that won't work with certain top coats certain um base coats that won't work with certain paints um you know that's that's just the nature of it and that's just how it goes you know like you just got to experiment with your painting and stuff all right so coming back down coming down to like the end of it i tend to use uh this uh, this is a Mr. Super Clear Gloss. Um, it comes in a matte as well. Again, this is Mr. Hobby. I really, really, really love Mr. Hobby paints. Um, for me, they're they're perfect. And they may be a little harder to find. They might be a little more expensive, but they're just really quality. You know, like um, the Super Clear comes in two types. It comes in the Mr. Super Clear and it comes in the Mr. Super Clear UV. Making toys, I would suggest using the UV. That will protect your toy from fading or anything if it's in sun. I don't know. Maybe you'll leave it out in the yard. Um, I tend to do like maybe a couple of coats of this um, just to give it that really ultra kind of factory look to it. Um, Monster Color also, and I don't have an example on hand. Maybe I do. No, that's a silver which is dried out. <laughs> God damn. No, not quite. Um, Monster Color also have a clear coat, which is like a candy hard clear coat. And the problem with that is it's a two-part clear coat. So you need to mix these two parts together, stir it up, make sure it's all good. If you stuff up that ratio, 
then you stuff up your clear coat and your clear coat just remains tacky forever and you screw your toy up and you have to strip it all back. Um, and just on that, uh, one of the most important things here is obviously alcohol or your thinner because you want to be using your, your leveling thinner. I use this to wash my brushes. I use this to wash my my airbrush. I use it to even sometimes strip paint off toys that I have screwed up, like here where I've messed up this bit. I'll come back and repaint that and all that kind of thing. So at the end of the day, you've got a whole bunch of different paints and stuff that you can use, right? Like big lots and lots of... <laughs> Lots and lots of combinations of paints. All right, you know. And honestly, really, this is just j just me. These are the ones that I found that I want to use. But you can use a whole bunch of different types of, of paint. You know, it's all about experimenting. It's all about like you know finding your way, and it's all about seeing what suits your style. Um, and it's all about what colors you enjoy and working out what reacts because some things might react with another thing. Um, but this is my way that I've found that works and I will be showing you a tutorial on how I actually paint stuff coming up pretty soon. But for now, yeah, lots of choices, lots of combinations. These are just some of the paints that you can use. There you have it. They're the paints that I use. I use them for all of my toys, um, like in different combinations and stuff. Sometimes I'll experiment and try something new because that's what it's all about. Making toys is a constant experimentation. It's constantly looking at new materials. It's always like buying new things. And a lot of the time you're gonna mess it up. You're gonna stuff it up. Like you won't get your paint right. Um, you won't get it all right and you'll learn how to do it. But I really hope that some of these little tips of my process and what I do and the things that I use, oh God, I love Mr. Hobby. I really do. I, I, I can't, can't say more about how much I love it. Um, it just fits me really well. But you don't have to use that. There's so many different products on the market. Um, and I just hope that maybe one of these things will be something that you can use or, or consider or test or try. And if not, maybe it inspires you for something else that you can use. Be careful your top coats, all right? Always test your top coats against everything that you use. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope it was nice and short and sweet, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Oh man, you know what I forgot? I forgot to tell you. One of the most important things that you need to do when you're preparing your paint for a good toy painting session is to have a decent drink. Now, White Claw, it's pretty decent after a while, once you get used to it. It's White Claw Hard Seltzer Black Cherry. Now, why am I drinking this? Well, because I don't put on too many calories with this and I've been on a bit of a health kick lately. But, as I said, after a while, after a while it starts to taste really good. If you don't want to drink alcohol, just drink normal seltzer. Like, you don't need the booze in it. But for me, this just hits the spot. Cheers. <laughs>